Kiora is lurking as he was observing the entire field at the end of the last chapter. His obsession with staying alive in Blue Lock is huge. Kiora Jin was always destined to stand at the boundary line. And then Kaneshiro goes on to explain that the first boundary Kiora had to face was when he was in his mother's womb, just like any other living organism, unless they're chickens or something. Her mother suffered a serious illness and was told by the doctors that her survival rate after giving birth was 50% as a result. If you read resonate with my content, subscribe to the channel. Kiora was born in this world strongly, though I still don't know if his mom is dead or not. Kiora has siblings as well as one was a short-tempered older brother and a loud younger brother. As a small child, Kiora always thought about which side and which brother would be more advantageous for him, like he's Kiyotaka Ayanokoji from the classroom of the elite. Whichever side he allied with will win, and his presence determines the victor as this is Jin's fighting spirit and way of life. From all these things, we could conclude that Kiora isn't looking to score but to link up with the person that's most likely to score a goal, or he could use that person for his own goal, since there's practically no way Kiora will survive if he doesn't do something as big as scoring a goal. Maybe he could get through with two assists if the egoists underneath the list perform horribly, but a goal is preferred. Since Kaiser's awakening, I honestly don't know if it's better for Kiora to side with the Asagi-centric system or Kaiser's. Even though that's all blown out of the water now since Kaiser went on to use Blue Lock for his goals. Even in Blue Lock, he showed this side of himself as he survived the boundaries of battle and has fought his way till this point and now that destiny has come around again. This is the first and last opportunity for him to survive. I wonder which side he will choose. One argument for him choosing Kaiser's side is the fact that it was because of Isagi that he couldn't get to play in the Ubers match in chapter 230, as Hiori got forced into the field by Isagi. Instead, because Isagi said that they needed someone who they can't predict that can improvise on the fly as it has to be a playmaker who can breathe new ideas onto the pitch. Hiori agreed as well and said that it would seem like there are two Isagis on the field, and he believes that against the current Ubers, it was the most logical tactic they could use. Pay close attention to the word logical because they performed exactly as Isagi envisioned and scored the winning goal for Bastard Munchen. And because Kiora is all about logic and chances, this would mean that he doesn't hold a grudge against Isagi. Another thing that makes this obvious is him being so calm about it. If this was Raichi, he would have tried to murder Isagi. This is when Kiora Jin in instinctively felt the moment when his choice could be either dead or alive. Isagi said that the field completely revolves around him right now as he was dashing up the field with the ball. All the movements of his allies are centered on him, and even the enemy's vigilance is at its max, in particular the Isagi simps called Michael Kaiser and Itoshi Rin. Kaiser is starting to aim for the goal on his own, which means that he's abandoning the cooperation with Ness, who he had been using until now. This pet dog is simping so hard on Kaiser, yet he doesn't really care about abandoning him for his goals since he was using Ness from the start anyways. But it was a logical decision as their attacking options increased. He wants to pass to the Blue Lock members for the sake of his own goal. Now the Emperor is trying to invade his stronghold using that psychology as he was dashing towards Isagi. Isagi didn't think it was a bad idea from him either as he is convinced that he is going to absolutely crush him. But if Isagi were to score here, his evolution would plummet as he enables his meta vision ready for battle. For the plot, it's probably the best if Kaiser scores now, with the third goal being the decisive one. Even though Isagi had completely crushed him in their game against Ubers and was reckoned as the leading force of the team, Kaiser doesn't give up as he got himself to zero and is becoming a new person. So it's either Kaiser's awakening or Isagi's absolute monarchy as he passes the ball to Corona. Tokamitsu didn't like that, though, as he started to press Corona, saying that he won't let them ever do that combo again, as he is referring to their planet hotline line, which is arguably Asagi's best attacking pattern together with whatever he does with Hiyori. Tokimitsu wants Corona to get out of the way as Corona is holding his own against Tokimitsu's incredible physicality. Nanase saw an opening because of that and proceeded to steal the ball from
from Corona as a result. Corona was pissed off and Tokamitsu as well because he won't get credit for it now. Remember that they're all fighting for a spot in the bottom feeder club because their skills haven't been outstanding enough to the clubs for an offer that would get them within the top 10. These dynamics within the Bastard Munchen and PXG team almost feel like a civil war, but it's only natural since everyone wants to survive. Kaiser suddenly dashes toward Nanasi as he stole the ball away from him as Isagi notices that Kaiser isn't directly targeting him anymore, which results in him making more rational decisions. In Chapter 209, even Noel Noah told Kaiser to not get too fixated on Isagi as he wouldn't tolerate any more of his illogical plays, except he did tolerate them as Kaiser never got benched and probably never will be benched. Noel Noah was right, though, as he has literally started to play better as soon as he listened to his advice. I wonder if he could have had a similar attitude when he was playing in Bastard Munchen, their regular matches as he might have been tunnel visioned on Noel Noah, which might be where the source of that advice comes from. The thing Kaiser is actually aiming for, though, is aiming at the flaws of others to get through Isagi. And the people he's poking in particular are people who have nothing to lose and are either in the low part of the top 23 or just not in the top 23 at all, like Raichi, for example, which might be the reason he complied with him so easily and passed back to Kaiser. After this, you can even hear him say that he has to score with his assist, which means that he uses people who don't want to die but are on the verge of death. This might mean he will use Kiora in the future too, as he might recognize him easier than Asagi would. And if that's really the case, his next target would be Kunigami, as Kaiser asked him to lend him a hand. So Kaiser proceeded to pass the ball to Kunigami, and Kunigami complied and passed the ball back to Kaiser. Isagi thinks this is really clever, as Kunigami couldn't move freely anyways, because he's burdened with Shidu on his neck, and he is using that situation to force him to pass back to him, unless he wanted Bastard Munchen to lose the ball. Kaiser seems to be making full use of his meta vision right now, as he is accurately understanding the situation of this team and manipulating other players their psychology, which is something that Kiyotaka Ayanokoji would do. Perhaps he has read the classroom of the elite novels. Are you serious right now, bro? Like, do I? Like, bro, stop trying to be spe- Don't be spe Bro, stop- Isagi really noticed that Kaiser is willing to abandon everything and change for the sake of his own results now, as he realized that Kaiser is an egoist just like him. Oh my god! Wow! Which meant that he is a world-type egoist. In case you don't know what world-type and self-type egoists are, the world-type seeks a pleasure that can only come from fulfilling their stories in the way they want. And the self-type ego is more about the journey towards a destination, which is why Kaiser is a world-type egoist in this example. The reason someone like Shidu is a self-type egoist can be perfectly described in chapter 130, as he said that all humans exist to leave behind a record of their existence. The very act of leaving behind one's genes is the basic programming given to all living things. Connecting with people, hurting people, and remaining in someone's memories are all the same. Creating something, aspiring to become someone, and of course making children are all acts of carving proof of your life in this world. And for Shidu, it just happened to be football as a goal is the same as fertilization to him. A shot is the seed and the goal is the egg, and the birth of that joy is called an explosion to him. Karasu and Rin are coming in to stop Michael Kaiser from advancing any further, as Karasu reckoned one more move is all he needs as Rin is thinking about killing him, which is a bit aggressive for a football match, I'd say. Their feet clashed together as the ball flew away, and the egoist to pick it up was no other than Hiori as he told Isagi that luck had descended upon them. Hiori seems to be on Isagi's side no matter what, as Hiori wants them to resonate and create more chemical reactions, but it was a feint as the ball was actually meant for Corona this time. This is the ultimate triangle, as Corona passes the ball back to Isagi, but little did he know that Charles Chevalier had seen through all of it, which lead to him intercepting the ball from Isagi. Charles wonders if Isagi is surprised or annoyed as he is in his meta-vision state as well. Isagi wondered if Charles was supposed to be unmotivated as we already got an answer to that in chapter 246 with the Loki and Charles dynamic, as Loki told him that he hadn't told him to do his homework yet, as it looks like Charles is Loki's pet, and he intends to make him his pet as he wants to ascend to the world 
world's best with a top-tier playmaker, but Charles told him that his meeting are always long, and he couldn't take it. Charles later confirmed to Loki that he doesn't want to do what he's told to, which would mean that he is a self-type ego. We go back to the present moment as the ball falls on Ness his lap, as he told Kaiser that he is still here. Can someone tell me how far this man is prepared to go for Kaiser? It's absurd to even think about it. If Ness is going to pass to Kaiser, Isagi has to notice it and stop that from happening at once, otherwise he might have a big problem. Watch this video next where I go over the reason Kiora will side with Isagi.